why you should start playing bluegrass right now. Hey, it's me, Baxter. <laughs> and Jonathan. I put on my country voice. I don't have to change my voice, really. Yeah, I don't see <laughs> Hey, so I just got back from Earl Fest. You did. Which you've been too much with me. Took old Sean this year. And we we're out there selling Taylor guitars. <laughs> what do you think of <laughs> bluegrass? Exactly what you think of. <laughs> I would uh, never. No, that's a, long, that's a long story. But no, I, I left there kind of like re-inspired. Because sometimes you're like, you're sort of like uninspired because there's been so much banjo and you want to sort of like shoot. Like poke your eardrums out a little bit. A little bit. But it was a little quieter this year. A little bit less banjo, but a lot of guitar. And darn diggity, they are some of the best guitar players I've ever seen. They really, like, like yes, bluegrass is its all thing. It doesn't matter if you like bluegrass music. No. no. Bluegrass mu music. I said music. Um, It's just good. I mean, think about all the people that play jazz. It doesn't matter that you hate jazz. No, I mean, and you should. <laughs> you should hate jazz. Um, yeah, that's no, right. No, and like, <laughs> oh. no, but I'm just like, the players that play bluegrass music are, it's so good. It's yes. somewhat frustrating. Yes. And the main thing, I think they're going to get mad at this. Not it. Like, if you want to play a little bit more dex dexterously, they're fast, Speed. they're faster, and then they're the fastest player yeah. that I've probably ever seen. That's probably true. Um, you know, you might, well, what about metal and tapping? Yes. Yeah, these guys are doing acoustic guitars. Yeah. With no amps. And I mean, it's very little, like, like it's just picking every note, like fast, fast. I mean, it's just, it's just a different type of speed. It, it is, but it's so precise. It is. And so like. And it's your right hand, you know. It's your right hand. Then you gotta have that, that, the, you gotta have your scales obviously locked in. And then you gotta be able to fit within a group. You gotta be able to play to a microphone a lot of times. Right now, like, that's the old school when you have like a condenser, a trumpet type of mic. When everyone just, it's time for your little yeah, ride, you just was, get in close and then you back up. And, and now, now everybody's sort of plugged in or mic'd up. It's just, yeah. because Merle Fest is a big stage. I like to use the Poe Ramblin' Boys as my example. Okay. That I'll talk about. They, those those cats are all, you know, sort of experts at their craft and what they do, top of the game. They have mediocre, mediocre instruments, but... um, <laughs> Sorry, CJ. I just like the a little grief sometimes. <laughs> um, no, they have, they have phenomenal instruments, obviously. Because if you saw their suits, their suits are awesome. I mean, it's just if you dress that way and you don't play great instruments, it's, he's got a Gallagher model now. Josh does, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The guitar player. Josh, yeah. Um, who looks stunning lately. Anyway, that's another story, too. But no, it's um, they, they can bob and weave. And like it is, they do the classic bluegrass formula, but they have this fresh take on a little bit. And the, but they have the skills of the, the ancients. Right. The gods. You know, they got this new sort of twist on it. It's, a, it's fresh, it's modern with the vintage styling, but with the vintage talent and practice. And then just the ability to bust out solos. Right. Insanely short bursts sometimes. That's what was sort of catching me funny. They would sing a line, and then the fiddle player, she would just like, wow, just like this flourish of things. And it was like, you know, it was like two bars. Like between like a, a verse and like another verse starting, like oh, yes, yeah. perfect. It's not like a blues jam. No, it's very different. I think bluegrass and country fall into that, right? Where they fill up. There is no real like open space. <laughs> like there's a fill from some instrument in every little spot, but they're very concise. They're very accurate. Well, it's so different than like the old timey music too. Like there's like and there's two camps there. Yes, like old timey, like you're playing the tune. Dam ba dee ba dum ba dee ba dum 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 ba dee ba dee ba dee ba dee ba dee Do that again like 15 times. Then you play section B. Ba dee ba da 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 ba da ba da ba ba dee. And you just do that over and over. It's a big group. It's fun. It's somewhat straightforward. Bluegrass is more of a virtuosic gymnastics exercise. I would say that's like, true for for a lot of it. Yeah. Besides the slow stuff, which is beautiful and sweet and soothing and breaks your heart, and you're like, man, life is hard. Um, but, but I mean, what you're talking about, that's why it's fun to watch like Billy Strings in his band, right? Because who's that? <laughs> he's just an unknown bluegrass guy. Uh, I mean, that's why there's so much fun to watch. I did have one of my friends at the festival. She came up and she asked, just like, have, have you heard of this guy named Billy Strings? I'm like, honey, what? If you haven't heard of Billy Strings and you're here, we have to have a serious reckoning <laughs> although there is some there's some like there's some i didn't realize that there's a little billy strings hate sometimes amongst the traditional like the, the, the old school cats they're like he's not the he didn't begin bluegrass blah 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 but uh, oh but he brings it to a whole new audience you gotta love him but just just be grateful and, and <laughs> like, that's a young oh and here's tony rice you know or here's doc watson or well that was the thing too that's so neat about bluegrass it 
in particular is like you have some of the best musicians right like and living still to this day playing i mean obviously we lost doc and merle and all the yep. greats but you have tommy manuals yep. you know sam bush and you can go to places like merle fest and see them every year the Kruger brothers and sort of see everyone like oh, if you go to merle fest and you love bluegrass i mean you kind of see everyone that you i met cats from france yeah. switzerland that came just to wilkesboro north carolina i'm like wow this is a departure from your Dog. cuisine, I bet. A little bit. A little bit different. <laughs> Going to a smoky steakhouse up on the corner. The, the Dodge City or whatever it's called. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's probably a little there. different than... Who knows? Dirty. It is. They moved it now. The it's Bojangles. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Fast Track is moving into where Dodge City used to be. Oh, God. It's up on some other place across... Shake up. I know. Town's going crazy. <laughs> but um, Fast Track wasn't open yet, but I think they're going to count on the race. Okay. The race track, sort of like they're... Yeah, because they're yeah. marketing. Yeah. But no, they're, the living legends are all there... And they're alive and you can see them. And something else we've talked about a little bit on our, our channel is like some of this is almost AI proof. Yeah. As far as the I mean, live. Not, probably not. But. I mean, not, no, not recording wise. I think they'll figure that out. Because like, I mean, bluegrass could be AI because like it's not, isn't they're not doing tons of bends in the same way. They could, with guitar in particular, it's much more. I did. I saw a video the other day where the guy, he the bluegrass, uh, the AI didn't play it, but it composed his like fiddle tune, like, like bluegrass fiddle tune. I remember that. And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. This is really good. It's a machine. Wrote it. I didn't write it. Just kidding. It didn't come from the hills of Appalachia. It's from a robot. Crack the formula. It's like Apple Mac version one. That'd be cool if that was the writer. No, it's, um, you'll learn phrasing. You learn how to play with other people quickly. You learn speed, of course, as we mentioned it. You learn extreme listening because, I mean, souls will pop up on the drop of a hat. And and it can go on for however many bars they want to. And you've got to be able to control your sort of phrasing, like peak points you hit to like know how long that's going to last. Yes. And it could be an anywhere. And it's very improvisational. And Because, I mean, every solo they do is pretty much just they're ripping it out there. I got a little dumb. No, it's like, it does. Because like, I'm not a great bluegrass player at all. I can play like sort of like rudimentary fake bluegrass. Yeah. Like rudimentary fake jazz. And it makes me want to like, you know, actually spend some time learning it. Different than Travis picking. What I what I think is kind of neat. To me, bluegrass is one of those things. And, and, and like straight up, like chicken picking kind of country guitar falls in the same category where a lot of times the guys you see, they've, they've been immersed in it since the time they were little and they start when they're, you know, from the hills in Kentucky somewhere, or Tennessee, and they just, it, half the time they don't really tell you, like there there's not always a great communication about how, here's how I did this thing. Oh no, I just, you know, I always saw Pappy do this and so now I do it. But we live in sort of YouTube wonderland time. So, I mean, there's YouTube guys that wonderland. break it down. The Lessons with Marcel guy does great, like Bluegrass Lessons. There's probably a million more. But but if you wanted to get into it, I think now would probably be easier than ever, which is true for everything. Yeah. But especially especially something like that that I think is so much passed down. Just you're immersed in it, you learn how to play it. Oh, I got to meet Wayne Henderson. That's well. pretty awesome. That was neat. I got to finally meet. I, I've known all of his friends for a long time. It was finally they just brought him down to the booth to say hello, and it was what a nice guy. Yeah, like what he does for like the just the not the industry but the community and the children is so nice like he does so much for charity oh, keeps, that. Yep. keeps the music playing he builds like guitars and gives some of these away for charity and if you don't know who wayne henderson is he builds probably one of the finer acoustic guitars in the world pretty, pretty amazing with right? a pocket knife yeah. sometimes pretty pretty much whittle the neck down has doing it's, it's a little bit and then you measure it's like just right what he said he was going to do like, all right that's weird um and they always sound stunning it's frustrating how good they are but that's just not that's not the most important thing about him in a weird way. See, it's the legacy continuation of what he does. Right. I think. Of because if it does stop, like we lose it. Sean and I were joking, like as they keep adding new stuff to Merle Fest, like different artists, like more country artists, more blues or rock and roll. Like, like what, your con up. what if Merle Fest became like, you know, an EDM festival in fifteen <laughs> years? Like, you know, so we were driving down like to twenty fifty or whatever it is. Like, cool. And they'll be like, "This is like a nice throwback, kind of, kind of." Because God knows what it'll be, uh, what the music will be like in 2050. Uh, EDM might be really old fashioned. I know. Oh God, <laughs> what's throwback? Drum and bass oh, from like the early 2000s. Cool. So everybody's yeah. listening to it in the country. That'd be really funny. Um, no, Tom, it's 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 a cool thing. So if you haven't exposed yourself to bluegrass, I recommend it. It don't be put off by the fact that oh, I don't like bluegrass music or. 
listen to the virtuosity of it. Listen to what those guitar players are doing. You know, listen. There's some wide stuff too, though. Like even if you say you don't like that, go listen to like Austin Krauss and Union Station, like some of the early records are, are fantastic songs. And or right, Jerry Douglas, Fred, you know, or that. It's um, they're not as is like old school bluegrass, but they're entertaining to listen to. Almost um, like Chumbawamba. You're my mate. Is my favorite song of theirs. Everyone just goes to the the hits. <sighs> I got with the palm. Sorry, uh, you you would believe that there there were days where we would listen to "You're My Mate" like <laughs> I don't know twenty times in a row on the stupid Sonos in the guitar shop. I, I tell people like, to know that they're my friends. Oh my god, <laughs> you're my mate. It's funny the first five times <laughs> <laughs> when he gets less. I mean, you're or, like or Baxter like walks out the door and then it just starts playing and you have no control. You're like, oh my god, I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> Like all I want to do is get <laughs> drunk here with you is like this sort of like breakdown version of the end. Oh God, <laughs> you're my mate. Oh, <laughs> I will stand by. I you remember it's burned in my brain. <laughs> it's a great song. I kind of want to listen to it now. We'll done. listen to it later. Okay. Sean will start crying. Yeah, he will. yeah. Pulls the ears off. <laughs> That's um. No, go check it out. You don't have to go immerse yourself in a bluegrass festival like we do. That's really insane. Maybe maybe that's the way to do it though. It did kind of inspire me a bit. Like I want to like really refocus on acoustics a bit after leaving it. <laughs> I mean, I like to watch bluegrass more than I like to listen to bluegrass. It's kind of like when I was a little kid playing baseball. <laughs> I didn't really want to sit and watch a baseball game, but I love to play baseball. And I think bluegrass is a little bit the same for me. You know, watching it like when you see guys like you know Jerry Douglas and Sam Bush, and you know, when you see him doing it, you're like, holy wow! Like, oh, that's that looks. They almost make it look easy, and then you they see do. Tommy Manuel. Yeah, he makes it look impossible. Because it's, what I mean, he does, sort of is. What he yeah. does is impossible. And sort of is possible. I don't, f I actually think he might be the first version of AI. Because <laughs> Australia, Australia is the new Wakanda. They developed it like 50 years ago. I mean, I've never, never Tommy Manuel. seen him make a mistake, to be fair. I just love his guitars all tattered and beat up. And he's playing like drums, bass, and guitar on one instrument. Bastard. Yeah. That's all I got for now. I think so. Go learn bluegrass. Click like, subscribe, hit the old bell. Have fun doing it, and um, enjoy your instruments. Peace be with you all. <laughs>